Hello friends, my name is Jess. Welcome to Books Past Bedtime. Today we are going to be starting a new reading vlog and this is a very exciting reading vlog because I am finally going to be doing what I've promised so many people and that is reading the selection series finally. So in this vlog I'm going to be reading the three original selection books from the original trilogy and sharing my thoughts with you about them. Did that make sense? I don't know. Just as a quick summary rundown, if you didn't know, this is one of the iconic series from like the 2012 YA dystopian era. So this takes place in, I believe, like a futuristic North America, and there is this bachelor-esque competition in order to find the girl that the prince is going to marry and who is eventually going to become queen. 35 girls are selected throughout the province to come and compete in this competition. And also important in this world, it's kind of in like a caste system. People are numbered, so like number ones are like royal royalty, twos are rich, threes are pretty rich too, and so on and so forth. I don't know what it goes down to, but our main character, America, is a six. Like, her family, are they a five? Maybe they're a five. I think they're a five. <clears throat> anyway, our main character's name is America, and she is one of the lower casts, and she actually gets selected to go to the castle and compete in this competition, but she really doesn't want to. She doesn't want to be there, but she goes to kind of appease her family and other people in her life because it's kind of a very exciting, very honorable thing to be selected for, so she goes. That's where we are now. Currently, I am 50% of the way through this book. I definitely am enjoying it so far. Um, It definitely is, though, giving me those 2012 YA dystopian vibes, but not necessarily in a bad way. Um, I've never read the series before, but it's actually kind of giving me a nostalgia for that era of reading and so basically where I am right now America has gotten to the castle and has met a lot of the other girls um they're all pretty wary of her especially because she's really captured the attention of the prince already his name is Prince Maxon but she is kind of like just straight up honest with him she's like look I don't really want to be here I don't really want to marry you but I will be your friend and help you like eliminate the other girls basically, I don't really know, but the other girls there get this different idea that she is like the favorite. Also, I'm getting ahead of myself. In the beginning of this book, like one of the reasons why she doesn't want to actually go to the competition and marry the prince is that she has somebody at home that she loves. His name is Aspen and he is toxic masculinity personified. Oh my god. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some kind of love triangle in this book and if that's a love triangle, mm, it's not even a competition. He is like, oh, awful. He gets so mad at her when she like brings him extra food or like tries to contribute money to their shared life starting fund and he's like I should be able to support you like that's my job blah, blah, blah. dude mm, mm -mm. I'm gonna stop you right there shut up <laughs> No, I hated him so much. He basically like breaks up with her before she goes. He already has some new girl that he's like gonna marry by the time they see her off to go to the castle. So it doesn't really seem like she's super strung up on him or like convinced that they're gonna get back together or anything. But I think she definitely still has feelings for him Um, because she was thinking they were gonna get married. So whatever, he's a jerk. Hopefully she realizes that he sucks. Max, on the other hand, I already really like him because he just has like a good personality and he seems like a really caring person. And even though this is kind of like a weird situation it's very like normalized in this world so he doesn't really see it as super weird like this is how his parents met and fell in love so he is he like sees it as a good thing but I am definitely really enjoying it so far I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen I am ready for some catty drama between the girls in the castle so hopefully that happens there's been a little bit so far but nothing like very dramatic it's just like gossiping and whispers but I'm ready for some shit to go down so hopefully it does I probably will finish this up in the next couple of days and let you know when I I'm done and what I'm feeling and then we will move on to the next two. Hello. I was stupid and got a sunburn today so I look like a tomato. We love it. I just finished the selection. I actually really liked it. So this is the kind of book that's just addicting. It's just mind candy and you just want to fly through it because you just need to know what's happening. It's definitely trash but it's fun trash. So I really really liked the main characters. Um, our narrator America who is going through the selection. I ended up really liking her. She kind of fits into the she's not like other girls tropes but not in an annoying way and not in a way that belittles other girls. What I really like the most about her I think is that she really wants to form friendships with the other girls that are there in the selection. Like she's not catty or petty. She really just wants to like support everybody and make friends, be there for the girl love and the girl support and I really really enjoyed that. I was glad that she wasn't like putting other people down. Um, obviously there's this nasty girl um, named Celeste who is just awful and um, America doesn't like her which rightfully so. But other than that she's like really nice to everybody and I really like 
like that. We like a nice girl who's nice to other girls. Um, so I really liked that. Also, I really love Maxon, the prince, um, who they're all trying to marry. Uh, he definitely is, um, great. <laughs> He just is really like sweet and caring and really just wants to be the best version of himself and it's just so sweet and he in America like instantly form a bond and kind of like a friendship and she can really like confide in him and trust him and he just really wants to help her. He does really like her but um, he's willing to like wait for her to develop feelings for him too. I don't know. He's such a sweetheart. He's just the best. I love him so much. Although at the very end he did do something that make, made me really mad so as I mentioned Celeste is like this awful mean nasty character and America tells him like she is a nasty mean awful person you should just send her home and he is like defending her and I'm like oh my god Max and no like what and what you need to get your head out of your ass she's awful so that made me kind of mad and he like really snapped at America for like saying that but then later he's like I just am mad because everybody's like telling me what to do and I didn't want you to tell me what to do as well but um Celeste sucks send him home Max and Okay, um, but other than that, he's an angel. <laughs> Who is not an angel is Aspen, America's stupid boy that broke up with her from her faction, wherever the fuck she's from. Um, he sucks and he appears in the castle as like a guard and I was like, no, uh-uh, go home. And so now America's conflicted and he always loved her and he was never with this other girl, blah, 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 blah. Gross. Send him home. Get rid of him. I hate him. I hope that he dies. <laughs> he is terrible. And he's fucking everything up. Um, I <laughs> I wish this didn't have to be a love triangle. I wish that she could just like get over Aspen naturally and then fall in love with Maxon and it would be great. But by the end of this, America is top six girl. So she is now the elite, which is why the next book is called The Elite. So we've got this one on deck and... I will be starting this one probably tomorrow. I have the audiobook for it. I listened to the audiobook of the selection as well and I really enjoyed it. So I will listen to the audiobook of this one also as I drive to work tomorrow probably. So that is the plan. I'll update you when I'm 50% of the way through this one. Oh, um, and I forgot to say it, but I think I'm going to give this one four stars. I kind of want to give it five stars, but I also don't because I don't think that this is a five star book for me. It definitely was a very fun read and it was very addicting and I wanted to keep reading and see what happened. I definitely have have feelings for some of the characters and I'm rooting for uh, obviously the main pairing America and Maxon. I definitely have emotions around this book but I don't think that it's five star worthy if that makes sense. So I don't think it's gonna be like a new all-time favorite for me. I don't know maybe I'll feel different like when I finish the series but for right now this one is a four star. 20% into this book, initial thoughts. Reading a little bit cheesier than the first one. First one's definitely cheesy. I don't really know what it is, but it's just like... In the first one, um, where we left off, America wasn't quite sure about Maxon. And now, um, she's like jumping into his arms and just being very much like all over him. But then she's like, thinks this thought like, how can I choose between my two great options? And I'm like, bitch, what two great options? Like, Aspen sucks ass. Like, he is not an option. <laughs> like, I don't just funny like he's terrible I, he's terrible he's awful there's no redeeming qualities about him it honestly makes me a little bit annoyed because at least make your love triangle believable I do not believe that she actually likes Aspen I don't know why anybody would like Aspen he sucks so those are my initial thoughts enjoying it a little bit less than the first one but I don't know that I enjoyed the first one like right off the bat I just like got invested in the characters as it went on so hopefully that will happen in this one too also like her and Maxon are really solidifying their relationship real quick and I'm like what happens in the rest of the series <laughs> I don't know I'll find out and I'll let you guys know okay so I just hit 50% of the way through the elite I'm enjoying it more than I was in the first little clip it definitely has picked up a little bit but I don't know if I'm enjoying it as much as the first one personally I'm not really into the bachelorette-esque storyline and the drama that that comes with I think it's kind of tiring almost because so far we've just been alternating between two different types of scenes so in the first scene America is over here jealous that Maxon is talking to all these other girls and then in the next scene she um, is talking to Maxon and being like I'm jealous of you spending time with all these other girls and he's like it's only you that I care about America and we just keep going back and forth and it's kind of tiring especially the scenes where America is being jealous of all the other girls it's annoying also her relationship with Aspen is so strange and I'm really quite sick of it to be honest with you um he needs to get out of here he's 
he sucks. I also hate Celeste. She is super, super annoying and it really bothers me that Maxon won't get rid of her and then he doesn't see that she is terrible. I guess he's like supposed to be the kind of character who only sees the good in people, but I don't know that there's any good in Celeste. So um, she also needs to get out of here. Her and Aspen can get together and get the hell out because they suck. There was also this like crazy thing that happened with Marley in this one. Like she was in love with one of the castle guards and she got caught having relations with him and they're not allowed to do that when they're in the castle being a part of the selection to marry the prince so um she gets flogged <laughs> and demoted stripped of her cast rank thrown out of the castle and like maxon kind of allows it to happen he claims that um he did that he negotiated that for them instead of death but um it's honestly pretty sucky i <laughs> they kind of like brush it off and like America's obviously mad at him for letting it happen but it kind of like instead of talking about it um it kind of just gets resolved because of all the other shit that's going on I don't know maybe it'll come back around it kind of like just happened um in the last 10% so that's where I am right now that's how I'm feeling um I'm liking this one less than the first one so it's feeling more like a three star read right now maybe a two and a half I don't know I don't know how I feel I really do like Maxon and hope that he kind of redeems himself from that thing with um Marley because that was kind of shitty but um um, he always says the right things. He's a sweetheart. So I'm excited to see how it ends up. I'm ready for the other girls to like get out of the castle. <laughs> I don't know. I know that's the point of the series, but it's annoying me. Um, anyway, I am going to hopefully finish this soon and then I will let you know what I think when I'm finished. Okay, I finished The Elite and I have some thoughts. So I definitely overall didn't like this one as much as I enjoyed the first one. I really started to get annoyed by the whole bachelorette idea of the competition. I really also didn't like like, along with America that Maxon was dating all these other girls and telling them things and having relationships with them. I don't know if it's just because I don't watch The Bachelorette so I'm not used to that kind of thing but I just did not enjoy that aspect and I think that's supposed to be part of the fun is like the drama of it all but I just am very much anti-cheating in any kind of capacity so I did not enjoy that aspect of this book at all. It really made me <laughs> upset and grossed out. Um, I just not a fan. Um, Going off that a little bit, I totally understand why America doesn't like that aspect of what's going on either. I wouldn't want to be dating somebody who's dating a bunch of other people and competing to marry him. Strange. But um, she's also a fucking hypocrite because she's doing the same thing, dating Aspen behind his back, making out with him in the middle of the castle, and then she has the audacity to be mad at Maxon for doing the same thing. Mm, something's not adding up to me here. Also, why is Aspen still here? He sucks so much. I hate him. Um, he's very annoying. America, get your shit together. She also just makes the most frustrating, stupid decisions, like not even having to do with Maxon and Aspen just in general. Like all the stunts she pulls in front of the king. It's like, he already hates you. Are you trying to get yourself killed? Like, I don't think she really understands the consequences of things. Um, doesn't seem to go through her head for some reason. And going back to Aspen for a second, at the end of this book, I don't really understand how he has the audacity to be angry and upset with her when she asks him for a breathing room because, I mean, he's known this whole time that she's considering Maxon as a uh, potential partner and then he's mad that when she admits that to him in so many words I'm just confused because from the conversation they had earlier like in the middle of the book it seemed like he was aware that she was trying to choose between the two of them but then when she actually like chooses or like decides not to choose or whatever he gets mad I just don't understand how anybody in this situation has the aud audacity to be mad at anyone else because they're all just a mess. <laughs> I also liked Maxon kind of less in this book. His justifications for things were really weak. Um, honestly sometimes he would say the right thing and I would be like okay he really does like America and then he would turn around and be a slime ball. I just wasn't a fan of that I the back and forth was really very annoying especially because it happened every chapter and they're also trying to have this like other side plot line of like rebels taking over the corrupt government like pushing back against decisions yada 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 but it's very super vague and odd and it's not fully developed it's just like they attack the castle all the time and they have to hide I like if you're gonna make that a storyline like make it more developed and part of the story I don't know I don't really understand what's going on there um so I think I'm <laughs> I'm very sorry Mary but I'm giving this book two stars please don't kill me Hello everyone! So I do not have another 50% update because I have already finished the one by Kira Cass and I didn't really like this one either. Sorry. In this one I just really was over it to be honest with you. I was over the drama. I was over the bachelor competition and the characters just got really 
fucking annoying to be honest with you. As far as the plot goes, um, still pretty non-existent. I spent most of this book just waiting for Maxon to find out that America was fucking around with Aspen right under his nose. Um, also America is really just the biggest hypocrite because she is just annoyed at Maxon for dating the other girls when she is doing the same thing with Aspen behind his back. At least she knows what's going on with Maxon. She's so annoying. She also just like makes the absolute worst decisions and continues to again and again and again. It's like for a while you like, she doesn't care about anything and then she goes and like takes some extreme philanthropic stand and you're like, why? Why can't you just care about it a little bit all the time? Why do you have to take these like drastic strange stands that honestly put you and the people you love in danger? Um, like be smarter, please. Also, she just has the strangest and most toxic reactions to everything Maxon does and then she just storms off once she tells him why she's angry and half the time she doesn't even tell him why she's angry she just gets angry and storms off I'm like have a goddamn conversation I cannot foresee them having a healthy relationship at all also in this book I kind of stopped believing that America and Maxon even cared about each other because every scene just showed me that they were angry with each other and didn't know how to work things out and then something dramatic would happen and they'd be like oh I actually love you no you don't they they both screw up so many times and do so many awful things to each other and Kira Cass kept telling me they liked each other but she didn't show me that they liked each other at all in any scene in this book and I really kind of stopped caring and just wanted it to be over like part of me wanted America to win because that's what I'm supposed to want but the other part of me just couldn't give less of a shit <laughs> I also felt there was like a lack of showing when it came to the king. Like America kept doing these really stupid things and the king kept getting really, really angry. But if he was as ruthless and controlling as they say he is in the text, I think he would have actually kicked America out like long before. He gave her way too many chances for very weak reasons. So I just really did not believe that. Also the ending really honestly just made me upset. Um, as I said, even up until the very end of this book, I was not believing that America and Max and actually really truly liked each other and could have a healthy and successful relationship and that was just proven at the end because they absolutely never had a conversation about Aspen. It was just kind of like brushed off. They never talked about it and I think that's kind of weird. Like I think that should have been addressed and worked through to make their relationship believable in the slightest and also at the ending like everybody that was contributing to a conflict in this book and then this plot just died so that we didn't have to do any conflict resolution. It was very convenient but also kind of annoying. It's like what is the point of any of this? if everybody's just gonna die. I guess ultimately I was just wanting too much from this book. Like I think I should have just taken it. I was not taking it super seriously I feel like but I don't know I couldn't get past these issues and ultimately I found that I did not really like this book. Um, I think I'm gonna give this one one and a half two stars. It just wasn't my cup of tea. I'm very sorry to everybody who loves this series. I definitely can see why you love it. It definitely has the potential to be a fun and lighthearted read and like an escapist kind of story but it just wasn't my kind of escape and that's okay. So overall all, I would say that the selection series is not for me. So while I did enjoy the first book, gave it four stars, I really did enjoy the second two, gave them both two stars. So overall as a series I think I would give this probably two and a half stars or probably not three, probably two and a half. To me it just had too much pointless drama and it just wasn't my cup of tea but that is okay. I hope this video didn't make you too angry. Please don't unsubscribe from me. Um, I very much respect your opinions if you love this book. Let me know in the comments below why you love this book. But anyway thank you so so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you being here. All relevant links will be down in the description below so definitely go and check that out. I am also very active over on Instagram so if you are interested in what I'm reading and what I'm doing in my day-to-day -day life definitely go follow me over there. But that is going to be it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments below what series I should read and do a reading vlog on next and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!